and welcome to our video podcast Adult Learning and Education in Times of COVID-19. While we can observe a calming of the COVID-19 situation in many parts of the world, other parts are currently confronted with the highest rate of infected people since the first appearance of the virus. So India is such a country. Um, and this is why we are going to look at how the Indian people are currently dealing with this crisis. Therefore, I am talking to Rajesh Tandon today. Rajesh is founder president of Participatory Research in Asia, a global center for participatory research and training since 1982. He is also the UNESCO co-chair in community-based research and social responsibility in higher education. Welcome, Rajesh. Thank you. Um, Rajesh, uh, stay at home, wash your hands. These have been instructions that all citizens around the world have heard many, many times during these last month. But what seems simple at first is not easy for everyone. Um, could you explain why these instructions are not easy to put into practice for many citizens of India? Thank you, Barbara. We have been uh, looking at this phenomena since uh, last week of March when these instructions were issued out and uh, a large portion of our people who live in urban areas live in very small houses, single rooms. There are lots of uh, migrant workers who live in, three, four of them live in like uh, 10 feet by 10 feet room. So when we say stay at home, and maintain two meter distance, it is inconsistent. The only way they can maintain distance is by going out of the home, in the park or on the street. But when you have a lockdown and you're not allowed to go out of the house, then you can't maintain distance. A similar question came with respect to water. How do you wash hands in parts of the country where water levels are low, where people are unable to access water for cooking, for drinking, let alone for washing hands of a family of five. So in Western part of India, desert area, water is precious, is more precious than anything else. And therefore, just saying wash hands 10 times a day, you know, it doesn't make sense for people who barely have water to drink. So these messages uh, sometimes uh, seem very simple, but they don't fit into everybody's reality. And when we are distributing soap and sanitizer to everybody to wash their hands, we only tell them wash hands. We give them soap and we give them some sanitizer. We don't give them water. We assume they have water. So how will they wash hands? How will family of five, you know, two adults, three kids wash hands? 10 times a day. They will have to pay money to buy more water. So, you know, this, this, this is a very big challenge that we were experiencing. And uh, it caused a lot of, lot of tension in the society. Um, another uh, important factor is information. And, and being well informed in this time is key to avoid getting the virus. Uh, but information is not available to everyone, as you just said. Uh, what ha has been your observation when it comes to informing adult citizens in India about the danger of the virus and about safety measures? Well, you know, as soon as the lockdown was imposed, mobility stopped and the main source of information was coming out from the National Disaster Management Authority, which is located in Ministry of Home Affairs in Government of India in New Delhi. Their advisories were in English language, slightly complex formulations as all government orders are, and they will issue them on email. And then they will go on uh, Twitter or they will go on WhatsApp. But less than 20% of our people have internet. So they obviously can't see. And then you have to deal with English language. And then the provincial governments will translate in other language. But the language of an official order 
you can say we have communicated but if the recipient has not understood then the recipient won't take any action based on that message so there was so much confusion and many civil society groups had to come into play they had to translate it in local dialects they attached some visuals they made some cartoons they made some small video films to explain to people if they understand that it is for their safety and that of their loved ones everybody will follow but if they don't understand they interpret it in different ways so this is this communication is critical and it has to be uh, a trustworthy communication so so source has to be trustworthy message has to be simple medium has to be clear and attractive it's, it's a it's a lesson for all of us in simple adult learning that uh, you know you you must be able to communicate in a manner that the recipient understands it the same way as you intended otherwise communication is incomplete um you just touched upon uh, the difficulties in accessing digital information however a digitization is often described as the solution for continuing education during this time of a lockdown Uh, but as we know, and as you just said, many people just don't, don't have access to the digital world. So what implications does this situation have on the Indian or even the world citizenship? Well, there is a big, big challenge. Not all chai children, other than a handful of less than 12% of our community, entire population, 12% of the households have a desktop or a laptop we must we must adopt digitalization but digitalization should not become another vehicle for exclusion it should not become another vehicle for making people feel small we, we let us invest in their ability to learn let's create proper digital learning platforms let us prepare the teachers let us enable the parents let us create a, 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 a methodology of learning a pedagogy of learning which is different from face to face but let us also not completely um, avoid face to face we must learn to combine that otherwise we will become entirely dependent on technology and that technology will then force us to use pre-packaged learning opportunities so the role of the instructor the teacher the facilitator in the digital online learning is even more important than otherwise because you have to enable every learner to participate to learn to relate the theory to their context without even being all the time in a classroom together so i i think this is a big challenge for countries like india we while we are a, known for our you know big digital and it industry a lot of that industry has not serviced indian community indian requirement it has been serving global markets so we need to um, make them create solutions which are workable in our context in our context of remoteness uh, low connectivity Uh, you know, maybe use uh, solar energy and other means by which the technology could be harnessed by all. Um, if we now look at your special field of expertise, global citizenship education, uh, what do you think? What should we learn uh, from this crisis? Well, I think we learned a great deal. You know, uh, I think the most important lesson for me has been that all the principles of global citizenship were visible locally we found how locally uh, support to others whom you did not know was necessary people came out 
with philanthropic contributions. People came out with support. They provided food. They provided shelter. They provided, and they didn't know who they were providing to. And we also began to hear about the situation across the world. For the first time, this pandemic has affected everybody, every country, every society. And we also discover that every society has some structural fault lines, whether Black Lives Matter or Women's Lives Matter or Rainbow Matters or, you know, Girls Matter, all these are showing up, Migrants Matter, you know. So without any effort at uh, citizenship education, we all began to understand how we share common humanity. So, so you, you begin to see that one COVID-19, one virus comes and brushes, paints all of us with the same brush. And our true colors of all our societies are visible. Therefore, people began to then appreciate that you can stay local, you can act local, but your values, your principles, and your commitments can be global. Coronavirus affects us all identically. <laughs> it doesn't matter where, where you live, what you speak, or what you eat, huh? what's the color of your skin, or what's your mother tongue, that doesn't matter. So this, this is a great moment to promote this, this sense of global citizenship. Not just formal commitments of the United Nations. They are important. They're important as a backdrop. But for young people to learn and appreciate global citizenship, pandemic has been the best school so far. The best school. Many, many thanks, uh, Rajesh, uh, for having shared your insights into the current Indian reality and, and for pointing out what citizens all over the globe can, can now learn from the crisis. It has been a real, real pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, take care Thank you. and goodbye. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank goodbye. you. Goodbye.